The first thing we're going to do is create our basic text editor in Swift. So go ahead and open up main.storyboard. Then embed our view controller here inside a navigation controller. Go to the editor menu, choose embed in, then select navigation controller. As always, IB placed it somewhere out of reach. Thanks for that IB. Let's move it down so it's somewhere sensible. Okay, our UI for this app is actually pretty simple. It's just text view and a button. First things first, let's make a text view work. Go ahead into the object library and search for a text view, not a text field, a text view. Drag out one of these things, align to the top left corner of the screen below this uh, nav controller. Then drag it down so it sits to the right edge like that, and then just at the bottom of the safe area like that, filling out all available space. Now go to the editor menu and choose resolve auto layout issues and select reset to suggested constraints. Now over here in the size inspector, we should see our constraints with leading and training super view and top and bottom to the safe area. There's some default Lorem Ipsum text in here. That can all go. So go to the attributes inspector and then zap all that text. You can all go leaving that blank. And then go to the assistant editor here and we have a connection for this thing called secret so we can modify it in code. So I will uh, scroll down, find some space, and control drag from there into my code and name this thing secret, like that. We also want to have a button inside our UI with a title authenticate. So let's add that now, uh, back in the object library, look for a button and drag one of those out into the canvas. Uh, by default, UI kit buttons are really small. If you look at the size inspector, you'll see this thing has a size of, of just 30 high, which is really, really small. Uh, Apple recommends a minimum width and height of 44. We'll give this thing a fixed height of 44, so it won't get any smaller than that. And we'll actually add auto layout constraints to make sure that height is kept preserved. So I will uh, control drag from the button to itself and choose height. As for its position, this should be centered vertically and horizontally in the screen. So I'll control drag from button up to its view, hold down shift and choose center horizontally and center vertically. And that's our full set of constraints for the button. For its title, uh, we don't want button of course, we want authenticate, like that. And when it's tapped, we want to call a method called authenticate tapped. So let's do that now as well. I'll control drag from there into some space and say authenticate tapped, boom, like that. Now before we leave IB, there's one more small thing we have to do, which is to move views backwards and forwards relative to each other. You see, when the user has authenticated, we just show the text box while making sure the button is no longer visible. And the easiest way to do that is to place the button behind the text view, so when text is visible, it covers up the button. So what we want to do is, over here in the document outline, we want to just grab authenticate, and move it above secret, like that. And you'll see in the canvas straight away, it goes white. It's invisible now, you can't see it anymore. It's still there, of course, but it's now behind the text view, so it's no longer visible. And finally, for our storyboard, go ahead and select the text view, then scroll way down its attributes and check the box marked hidden. So it starts life as invisible. So the first thing you see is authenticate. Tell us who you are before text box is visible. And when that's done, you should see Authenticate sort of peek through in like a light blue text. That's basically saying there's something above it, but it's transparent because it's hidden right now. And that's our UI done. Let's head back to viewcontrol.swift and the standard editor, then hide this right-hand bar here. We're gonna write a little bit of code, the same thing we did back in Project 19 to make our text view adjust its content and scroll insets when the keyboard appears and disappears. This is the same we had in Project 19, except now it's called Secret. So first down in view did load, we'll go ahead and add some code to watch for two events coming in on the notification center. We'll say let notification center equals notification center dot default. And then if you remember, there are two we care about, UI responder dot keyboard will hide notification and UI responder dot keyboard will change frame notification. And we boast those things. So things like the quick type keyboard appearing and disappearing or the hardware keyboard being connected or otherwise, they're all tracked correctly. So we'll say inside here, notification center dot add observer. We'll say self 
hash selector. This would be a method we haven't written yet called adjust for keyboard. So we'll say hash selector adjust for keyboard. Name will be UI responder dot keyboard will hide notification. And object will be nil. I'll do the same thing again. Notification center dot add observer self hash selector. Same thing again. Adjust for keyboard. Name this time will be UI responder dot keyboard will change frame notification and then object nil like that. So watch those two events and both times call the adjust for keyboard method. We'll get complaints. We haven't written that yet. That's okay. That tells iOS when a keyboard changes or hides, it should notify us. As a double reminder, the hide is required because we do a little hack to make the hardware keyboard toggle work correctly. Look back to project 19 if you don't remember why this is needed. Anyway, next we'll write the adjust keyboard method, which again is identical to what we saw in project 19, apart from the outlet name. I'll scroll down and say, at obc func, adjust for keyboard, take some sort of notification, like that. And this is the same code we had in project 19. So if you want to, you can copy and paste and make one little change at the end, because our text view now is called secret. So here, the first thing we do is say, guard let keyboard value equals notification dot user info optional using the key UI responder dot keyboard frame end user info key. If you remember, this will be an NS value all being well. And if it isn't, we will return. So if any of those things fail, it can't find the key, can't find user info, can't make it NS value, just get out while you can. Something's gone wrong. If you recall, NS value wraps things like CG rect and CG point because Objective C couldn't store those inside dictionaries. We've got to pull out the, the uh, rect from there by saying let keyboard screen end frame equals keyboard value dot CG rect value. And that thing is the size of the keyboard relative to the screen, not relative to our view. It doesn't take into account rotation. So we have to do that by saying let keyboard view end frame equals view dot convert that keyboard screen end frame from view dot window. So take it from our window coordinates to our views coordinates, i.e. take into account rotation. Next we'll see if we are hiding or not. So if we're hiding, we'll reset the content inset to zero. This thing is going away, make our secret text view be the full screen. So we'll say uh, if notification, oops, scroll down a little bit, notification, dot name is equal to UI responder dot keyboard will hide notification, then secret dot content inset equals dot zero, no insets. Otherwise, we'll say our secret has a content inset of a UI edge insets value. And if you remember this takes top left, bottom and right. Top left and right are all zero, that's easy enough. But the bottom needs to be the height of our keyboard minus any safe area inset on the bottom of our screen, taking into account iPhone 10 style home indicators. So we'll say top is zero, left is zero, bottom will be keyboard view end frame dot height minus the view we have safe area insets dot bottom. And right will be zero. After the condition, we'll say uh, secret dot scroll indicator insets, how big to make a scroll bar? That should be equal to secrets content inset. So the scroll view matches the size of the text view. And finally, if we need to, we'll scroll this thing to whatever was selected by saying let selected range equals secret dot selected range. And then secret dot scroll range to visible that selected range like that. Like I said, nearly all that code is the same as what we had in Project 19. There's nothing new just yet. Don't worry though, it's about to get more interesting.